Hello, my name is Hemingway Jones, and I make videos about fountain pens for curious people. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to speak about the top three reasons why you should consider using a vintage fountain pen. Won't you come along? If you get interested in writing with a fountain pen and you become wholly immersed in the smooth writing experience and maybe you become a little obsessed over the shape of a nib and what it can do and you start to dive deeper into how different shapes of the nib drive different shape lines across the page and it becomes so interesting with all the different variables and all the amazing magical tools that are available to you almost like an artist selecting a specific brush for a specific beautiful painting and your final piece of work whether it's a journal entry a letter or a note to a friend is like that personal masterpiece that is just expressing who you are through so many layers if you go down that rabbit hole as i have then sooner or later your attention is going to be focused on vintage pens and all the amazing things that they offer through over a hundred years of innovation and possibilities that are inherent in these wonderful writing instruments. The experience with writing with a vintage pen is very different than a modern pen, especially with those pens before 1950 or so, before manufacturing became that much more uniform in its tolerances and the pens were often made out of materials that aren't used as often these days things like ebonite and celluloid so you have these amazing possibilities in the past that you just cannot find in present day pens and this is no more clear than in the first reason why you should try a vintage pen One of the distinct joys of vintage pens are vintage nibs. Some of the older nibs are nothing like anything you could find today and their prices relatively are accessible. Take a pen like the Waterman 52 and a half with that ideal nib that is as flexible as a paintbrush. It is a magical experience writing with that pen and it can be had for under $200. It is an amazing nib that is more flexible than any of the flex nibs I've tried from recent pens. These nibs offer an amazing amount of flex, an almost impossible amount of flex, yet they're still smooth and easy to use and their feeds seem to keep up. They rarely railroad and almost never skip. They have this constant flow of thick, amazing ink that just drives your writing like a smooth sheet of polished marble. It's absolutely beautiful and it's an amazing, pleasant experience. With these nibs, the lightest of touches produces a fine line that you can write very small, very precise, very wispy and very flowing. It's a really lovely fine line that you can trace into magnificent words, but then if you give it a bit more pressure, the tines yield. They spread wider and more ink flows. So much so on the page, it goes to double broad. It's absolutely amazing the degree of flex and the bounce back, how by easily lifting up and taking the pressure off, it goes right back to that fine posture and your writing 
can continue. This makes it just glorious for calligraphy, if you can do calligraphy. It's also amazing with writing your signature or just for some emphasis within words. It's incredibly inspiring while you write. And the only modern nib that feels remotely like this to me is the Montblanc Egyptomania nib, which feels very similar, but has almost no discernible line variation. So it really marries this soft feeling brush-like nib with an incredible performance, almost alchemic. You almost are in disbelief that they were able to manufacture something like this. And maybe more importantly, you really question why modern manufacturers can't. Some of these nibs are steel. Why can't they produce something as amazing, as expressive, and as flexible? I just don't know. Another reason why vintage pens are so much fun, and I alluded to this earlier, is that the tolerances in manufacturing weren't as strict or precise as today. So many of these pens feel very different, even in the same iteration. Many vintage Estherbrook J's, for instance, they'll all feel a little different and there were many nibs available for these. Also, the style of manufacturing in the day, they often mixed components just to get pens out, so sometimes the specs on a pen weren't necessarily that which it came for. Sometimes clips from other models were on these pens, and sometimes they were added through the years as additions or repairs. But it reminds me a bit of guitar manufacturing. If you know anything about how Gibson produces guitars, sometimes the spec pickups are different than what you expect, and it came that way from the factory, maybe the hardware as well. It was just what they had lying around. They put it on a model and they pushed it out the door. It's very similar with vintage fountain pens. It's very rare on modern fountain pens, and it's really part of the fun of using these and discovering them. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that there is a downside to this as well. If a dealer is disreputable, they can certainly cobble different pen pieces together into what's called a Franken pen, and then you're not getting what you're paying for. So you definitely want to purchase from reputable dealers, people like Peyton Street Pens, who have a guarantee and stand behind the stuff they sell. I feel comfortable with them. Another reason to consider using a vintage fountain pen is just to keep the legacy going. Imagine something happens and a pen collection gets dispersed through an estate sale or something else and they're just out there waiting to be used. Why buy a new pen that uses even more resources when you can discover a vintage pen that may be just that amazing and has been lying dormant for 30, 40 years, yet has so much more life performance and just such an individual feel to it that you can really distinguish your writing and your expression. So I think that's really important. I know me personally, I think sometimes what will happen to my collection when I'm no longer here, it'll get scattered to the winds. It certainly makes me feel better if someone would purchase these pieces and use them and show the same level of passion and attention for them that I have. So I just think that it's fantastic to keep the story going with these marvelous writing instruments. And in the great tradition of the Hemingway Jones channel of having more items in the list than it's stated, let's get into reason number four, and that is the history and the heritage of these fantastic pens. Some of these pens, like my oldest pen, is around 100 years old. It's a Watchman 52 and a half with that fantastic nib. It's made out of hardened rubber. It has this fantastic groovy surface that feels very tactile 
and wonderful in my hand. It's very small and elegant. It has a really small ink capacity, but I see that as a positive so that I can use different inks in a fairly quick succession because the ink only lasts about four or five pages in my journal. It's that small. But it's from the days when inkwells were nearly ubiquitous in offices, at homes, and everywhere else. So it was pretty easy to find a place to refill your pen. So capacity wasn't as important. So fantastic pen there. I often think of all the history that that pen has been through through wars and revolutions and everything else. Who knows who wrote with it? It could have been part of an amazing story that's all lost now, but it has a certain resonance to it. And even when I write sometimes, I feel like my handwriting looks just a little bit different, a little bit more old fashioned and certainly expressive. It definitely shows a unique quality to my writing. So. The heritage is part of the romance and it's a way we interact with our pens that we feel a bit of their history and their legacy and in a way we're just custodians of these pens. They pass through us and our generation, perhaps go to our children and who knows where else from there. It's kind of amazing to be just a small part of an amazing pens journey. Because I imagine this Watchman 52 and a half will carry on, my Watchman 5, and many of my other vintage pens, my Conway Stewart, all amazing pens that have survived this long. There's no reason to think they will not carry on for many generations to come. And personally, I'm inspired being in the center of so much history before and after. It's very inspiring. Now there are some downsides with vintage pens. Sometimes the components are on the verge of wearing out or sometimes the internal bladders will just quit on you at a moment's notice. So it's always good to have a place to have them repaired. You can send them off. Usually pen repairs are not too expensive and it's also an opportunity for you to learn how to do it yourself. That is not a bridge that I have crossed but I do consider it sometimes and I think it's a fantastic vocation and it would certainly be useful to be able to maintain your own fleet of pens and to preserve them for future generations. Regardless of the drawbacks, I think that vintage pens are absolutely amazing tools and I just love being a part of their history. It's just incredible to think of this pen being passed down silently through the years Perhaps it was dormant for many decades in a closet or a drawer, but now it's back in circulation. It's doing what it was designed to do. A pen that perhaps was used in World War II that saw the first man on the moon that passed through the 70s and maybe was used academically in the 80s. You're just limited by your own imagination. It's just amazing that these tools will be preserved, passed on, and will be writing for many years to come. I can only hope that my words and my deeds last as long as these amazing writing tools. It's inspiring. So what do you think about vintage pens? Do you enjoy writing with them as much as I do? Right now, I can barely put down my Watchman 5. I've been writing with it so much, finding so much inspiration in that wonderful pen. Let me know in the comments. Also, if you've watched this video this long, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of the conversation and to join this journey with all of us. This is a fantastic community of fountain pen enthusiasts, and I'm inspired every time I look in my comments. So consider it. Also, membership is available. I'd love to have you as a member of this channel. There are a lot of fun perks. You get a lot of access and interaction with me and the other fantastic members of this channel. Consider it. 
So I release new videos each week and I have a live pen show each Tuesday night at eight Eastern time. So I promise we will see each other very soon further up the road. So take care.